when you purchase phosphorus, it's P4. It's one of those things, it's really not monatomic nor diatomic. It's an exception, but you don't have to remember it. And we're going to react it with water, or pardon me, with oxygen. In other words, we're burning the stuff, and we get P4O10. Okay? And then, for our second one there, we're going to take the P4O10, and we're going to react this one with water. And that gives us phosphoric acid. And so we have our two balanced equations. Okay, our chemical company that we work for wants to produce phosphoric acid to sell. It's a big, <coughs> big money maker when you think every cola drink throughout the world has some phosphoric acid in it. And so bottling companies are buying tons of phosphoric acid. It's also used in fertilizers. And so there's a huge market for it as fertilizer. So our chemical company wants to make this stuff. Okay, oxygen, no problem. The oxygen can come from the air. Water, no problem. We have a source of that. Okay, if we wanted to do this in one step, again, it's the same story you heard before. This material right here, we have to go buy it from some other chemical company. And they would probably charge, you know, whatever the markup is. Another problem, that storage issue. But this stuff is nasty to store because if it comes in contact with any moisture at all, like humid air, it's going to spontaneously <coughs> react and give you that phosphoric acid before you're ready. Okay, so if there's a little crack in the lid or something, the whole thing is no good. And not only... Does it pick up moisture from the air and make the phosphoric acid before you can collect it and clean it? That uh, it also has some issues, health issues, because if you breathe it in, you know, if you're storing it and a bunch of it puffs up, it's a white, very fine powder, your nose, your mouth, your eyes turn into little acid factories, but it's not just the acid you're going to have up your nose and in your mouth. It's also a very exothermic process. So you got hot acid in your mouth and your nose. So it's hard to store, especially here in the South, where every day, usually every day, it's so humid. Now, if you worked in Denver, Colorado, where it's usually dry, you wouldn't have quite the problem. You could keep it dry. So our company has decided we're going to make our own. And so let's look at the numbers. We're going to start with 272 grams of this, and we're going to have excess this. And so, this is what we want. Now, shall we go to moles or shall we go to grams? Moles. Because that's going to save us some effort when we take that to go on into the second one. Now, we're going to have something else here. Let me call this one number one, and this is number two. And let me peek it. Does anybody have my notes handy? First, you got it. What's the first? It says something about percent yield on the first one. You see that? Percent yield. It was Down at the bottom? Yeah. The problem states that this first reaction has an 89.5% yield. Okay. So take 89 point okay. And then how about the second one? What's the number? 90 or 90 something? 98.96.8%. Okay. Okay. Now, we got a complicating factor here that we did not have in the previous one. Okay, in the previous one, we did a wait, wait, we did a wait, wait, and a story, and we pretended the first one is 100% yield, the second one is 100% yield. Well, that wasn't realistic, because anytime you're making something, you're probably not going to get exactly 100% yield. So, we ought to take these two things into account this time that we did not have to last time. Okay, now, let's set up, this is going to be number one. And since we're just going to moles, this is going to give us moles of P4O10. Okay, in this first set of parentheses, what are we going to do? 272 over what? 124. 124. 124. 
Emily, where'd you get 124? The formula way. Right. Yeah, formula way to P4. If you look up there at phosphorus, it's 31. When you round it, the phosphorus is right here. It's 31. We got four of them. So she took four times it. Our mole ratio on this thing, Pedro? 1 over 1. 1 over 1. So let's get moles here. Bruce, what'd you get? 2.20. 2.20 of moles. Now there's two different ways to handle this. I think this is the easier of the two. That this is theoretical. We're not going to get that much. We're only going to get 89.5% of that. So over here on the side, let's take that into account now. Because I'm not going to get 2.20 to go on with. Okay, so we're really doing a percent yield problem with a little twist. If, let me just write something up here and then I'm going to erase it. If you don't think mathematically, you know, you think, hmm, 89.5% means I get 89.5% of that. If you just memorize this, you're doing the same math. 89.5 is equal to theoretical, <coughs> so the actual is that theoretical is 2.20. And yes, you can do a percent yield with moles or with grams times 100. And so you bring 100 over, divide by 100, you get that. And then you're going to move that 2.20. So, if you're doing it really mechanically, you can go back to the definition. But if you think mathematically, you could just do that. Let me take about two more minutes and we'll finish this up and then we'll still take our 10 minute break. Okay, everybody comfortable with what we just did? Okay, so number two, we got to have this answer. Anybody got that cranked already? 1.66? 1.66. 1.96. 1.96 moles. 9.7. Nine, yes. Okay. Now, if you're keeping it rolling on your calculator, you're not going to be rounding like that. So we may not all agree exactly on the tail end. 1.97 moles. Okay. Mole ratio. Anybody just shout it out. 4. 4 to 1. 4, 2, 1. We're assuming we have plenty of water. Okay, and then I'm going to need a formula weight here. Does anybody have that handy? Formula weight of phosphoric acid? 98.0. And that's going to give us grams. Do you have that, Russell? Um, In grams? It's... 768.32. Yeah. Okay, let's just call it 768. That's going to be grams, but over to the side. We're not getting that much on the second step. We're only getting 96.8% of that, and that's going to be our final answer. Now, notice I did a percentage here with moles, and I'm doing a percentage here with grams, no problem. Allison, do you have this last thing punched? Um, 742. I just couldn't hear. 742. 742 grams. Is that what other folks got? I know I was rushing on this last part, but do you see how sequential you do this one? But we had one extra little twist. We had to take into account it wasn't 100% yield before we went on. We took that into account right here. Then we went on with this. We did our second weight weight. When we got our answer though, hey, we're not getting 100% yield. We had to take this into account, so we take that percent. Just one last thing, let me say. If you're a math major or you think mathematically, you could wait, go with 100% yield, both of them, and at the tail end, then you can multiply that whole answer times 0.895 times 0.986.